In section 3.1, we are reading graphs in the rectangular coordinate system. Our objectives are to read bar and line graphs, define the rectangular coordinate system and plot ordered pairs of numbers, graph paired data to create a scatter diagram, determine whether an ordered pair is a solution of an equation in two variables, and find the missing coordinate of an ordered pair solution given one coordinate of the pair. The following bar graph shows points scored per quarter in a basketball game. We're going to use the bar graph to find the total score, the final score. So we can see the Celtics. Let's begin by making a chart so we can identify the points scored per game. And it looks like in the first quarter, the Celtics scored 16 points. In the second quarter, it looks like they scored 22 points. The third quarter, 30 points, and the fourth quarter, 20 points. Okay. You can add those together to get the Celtics' final score. Now let's look at the Lakers. The Lakers scored in the first quarter, 20 points. In the second quarter, looks like about 18 points. The third quarter, 25 points, and the fourth quarter, is 20 points. So we can add those together to get the final score for the Lakers of 82. In part B, the following line graph the following line graph shows the average monthly rent for people in Worcester. How much did monthly rent increase from 1980 to 2000? So by looking at the bar graph we see that in 1980 the Rent in dollars per month is $400. Now looking at the year 2000, we see that the monthly rent increased to $1,400. So we can tell that there was an increase of We are going to plot each ordered pair and state which quadrant or on which axis each point lies. Now our graph paper is divided up in two quadrants by the x-axis, which runs horizontal, and the y-axis, which runs vertical. And each ordered pair that you see has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Now if the x is positive, that point is located to the right of the y-axis. If the x value is negative, that's located to the left. If the y value is positive, that's located above the x-axis. And if the y value is negative, it's located below. And then those two, the x and the y axes, they divide our graph paper into four quadrants. And we number those quadrants beginning in the upper right corner, quadrant one. And then we go counterclockwise. So the upper left corner is quadrant two, the bottom left corner is quadrant three, and the bottom right quadrant is quadrant four. And we use Roman numerals to label those quadrants. In part A, we're looking at the point with the coordinates of negative two in the x direction. So we begin at the origin and we move two units to the left and then the y value is a negative five, so we're gonna move one, two, three, four, five units down. So this point here is located at negative two, negative five. That's negative two in the x direction and negative five in the y direction. So we can see that that point lies in quadrant three. So let's mark that down. For part B, we're looking at the point with coordinates zero, negative four. So that's zero points in the x direction or zero units in the x direction and one, two, three, four units down in the y direction. So this point here has coordinates zero, negative four. And this does not lie on in any of the quadrants. This point lies on the y axis. The next point has fractions in it. So we are locating the position two and two thirds. 
So we go starting at the origin, which is right the center, we're gonna to move to the right one, two, and go two thirds of the way in the X direction, positive direction to the right. And then four and a half, we're gonna go up one, two, three, four, and then just halfway. So that right there would be going up one, two, three, four and a half in the Y direction. So this point, we can label that point as two and two thirds and four and one half. This point is located in quadrant one. And then in part D, we have a point that's located negative one in the X direction. So starting at the origin, we go to the left negative one, and then we're moving up one, two, three, four. So this point here is negative one, four, and we could see that that's located in quadrant two. The table gives a bookstore's net dollar sales for the period of 2000 to 2005. In the first row, we see the years labeled with X, starting with the years 2000 and increasing to 2005. The second row, we have sales in thousands. That's going to be our Y values, beginning with 19, which represents $19,000 in sales, all the way up to $26,000 in sales in 2005. In part A, we are writing this pair data as a set of ordered pairs of the form year, comma, sales. Since we're looking this, at this as a set of paired data, we can use the squiggly notation, uh, squiggly brackets to denote the set notation. And then we can begin with the first year of 2000 corresponds to the sales of 19, which would be $19,000. And then the next ordered pair is 2001-22 and so on, 2002, 21, 2003, 23, 2004, 25, and then 2005, 26. So when we write those ordered pairs, we do group them with the parentheses for the ordered pair, and then the squiggly brackets are used for the set notation. In part B, in your own words, write the meaning of the ordered pair. Now I've mentioned that um, before. For example, the first ordered pair means in the year 2000, sales were 19, and that's in thousands of dollars, so $19,000 in sales. And then you can continue with the rest of those. In part C, For part C, we are creating a scattered diagram of the paired data. Let's put this up a little bit so we can have some room. I'm going to begin by graphing a vertical and a horizontal axis. And I want to label the horizontal axis with X, and that represents our year. And the vertical axis is Y, and that represents our sales in thousands. Now we are going to begin marking the scale on the graph, but we don't necessarily need, want to mar begin start counting at zero. So we can make a little break in the graph and then start beginning at this point at the year 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, and 2005. Okay, so just want to get it all to fit in there. And then in the vertical axis we have the sales in thousands. So again we don't necessarily want to start counting at zero. We can begin right here with sales of 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. And then a scatter diagram is simply a set of points that are on your graph paper. Everything is clearly labeled. So let's begin in the year 2000 with sales of 19, 2001 with sales of 22, 2002 sales went down to 21, 2003, 
to 23, 2004 up to 25, and 2005 we've got 26. So a scattered diagram is simply a collection of those points and each point represents the ordered pair that's, that's given in the table. We want to determine whether each ordered pair is a solution of the given linear equation. Our first linear equation is 5x plus y equals 15, and we're given three points to determine if each one of those points is a solution. So let's begin by checking the point 1, 4 in the equation, the linear equation 5x plus y equals 15. Now remember that our ordered pairs are in the form of x comma y, so we're going to replace the x in the equation with 1 and replace the y in the equation with 4. And what we want to do is check, I'm going to put a question mark here, is that going to equal 15? If it does equal 15, then we have a solution. That point is a solution to the linear equation. Let's simplify this by multiplying, following the order of operations, and we see that we get 5 plus 4 is 9, and that does not equal 15. So we could say this is not a solution to that given linear equation. Let's check the next one. Let's check 2 comma 5. We are replacing the x in the original equation with 2 and the y in the original equation with 5. And we want to check, question mark here, does that equal 15? By using the order of operations, we see that we get 10 plus 5 which does equal 15, so that means yes, this is a solution to that given linear equation. And then our last point here we want to check is 0, 15. Again, we are plugging that back in, 0 in for x into the original equation and 15 in for y. Does that equal 15? By following the order of operations, we do see that 15 does equal 15, so this is a solution to that given linear equation. For part b, we are looking at the equation, which is x equals 1 fourth of y. Let's check our first point, where our first point is 1 4. Again, remember that we have x comma y, and we're going to replace the x with 1 in the equation. Does that, with a question mark, equal 1 fourth of y, which is 4. And we can see that 1 does equal 1 fourth of 4, which is equal to 1. So that is a solution to that given linear equation. Let's check our second point, 8 comma 2. Does x, which is equal to 8, equal 1 fourth of 2? Again, that's a question mark here. If we simplify, we have 8 on the left side and 1 fourth of 2 is a half. That does not equal. So we can say no, that is not a solution to that given linear equation. The final point here, 0, 0. We plug in 0 for x in the original equation. Does that, question mark, equal 1 fourth of the y, which is 0? And we do see that 0 does equal 0. So we could say yes, that point is a solution to that given linear equation. Complete each ordered pair so that it is a solution of the given linear equation. Our first given linear equation is x plus 2y is equal to 6. And then we have the point with coordinates 2, comma, and then we have a blank. So in this case, we're given that x is equal to 2 and y is unknown. By plugging our given value into the linear equation and solving for the unknown, we'll be able to find out the solution. Let's begin by replacing the x in the original equation with 2. And the y we can't replace. We don't know what it is. That's what we're trying to solve for. And write the equation by substituting the 2. Now we're going to solve this equation for y by subtracting 2 from both sides of the equation. And then simplifying the next step, we get 2y is equal to 4. And then by dividing both sides by 2, we can see that y is equal to 2. So our solution 
is x equals 2 when y is equal to 2. So 2 comma 2 is the solution to that given linear equation. Let's do the next point here. Again, the same original linear equation of x plus 2y is equal to 6. In this case, the x value is unknown and the y value is equal to negative 3. So we can solve this by substituting in what we know for y but leaving x as a variable and then we'll solve that. So we begin by writing this linear equation as x plus 2 times y where y is equal to negative 3. That is equal to 6. We can simplify that because 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So we can write this equation as x minus 6 is equal to 6. By adding 6 to both sides of this equation, we solve to get x is equal to 12. So that means when y is equal to negative 3, we know x is equal to 12. We can write our solution as an ordered pair, 12 comma negative 3. For part b, we have our linear equation is y equals 1 third of x minus 2. And our first point given is 6 comma a blank. So we know that x is equal to 6 and the y is what we're trying to solve for. So by plugging in x equals 6 into the original equation, and then we can simplify this, we get y is equal to 1 third times 6, which is 2, and 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 6, y is equal to 0. We can write our solution as an ordered pair, 6 comma 0. Let's try the second point. Again, we know our original linear equation was y equals 1 third x minus 2. The point given the x is missing, so x is unknown. That's what we're going to try to solve for. And the y is equal to negative 1 third. By substituting in, the y equals negative 1 third equals 1 third x minus 2. We want to solve this equation for x. So to do that, we are going to add 2 to both sides of the equation. Now when you're adding fractions, you may want to go back to your notes from your previous math classes about adding fractions together. Negative 1 third plus 2, in order to add fractions together, you do need to get a common denominator. So 2 is the same thing as 6 over 3, so that we can add those together, and we get 5 over 3 is equal to 1 third of x. Now to solve this, we are going to multiply both sides of this equation by 3, or the reciprocal of 1 third. We can multiply by 3 over 1. Multiply both sides by 3 over 1. When we multiply that, we find our solution for x is uh, 3 times 5, 15 over 3, which is 5, is equal to 1 third times 3 over 1. Those will divide out and we get x. So x is equal to 5. So when y equals 1 third, negative 1 third, x is equal to 5. We can plug that back in and write our solution as an ordered pair. 5 comma negative 1 third.